Hello, hello, hello. You're listening to The Manic Pixie Weirdo. I'm Abigail, your host. And this is a podcast where sometimes, some weeks, uh, we talk about relationships and all the different kinds of relationships we have in our lives. Um, So, look, guys, turns out I am perpetually doomed uh, to just be late. I'm doomed to be perpetually late. Uh, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know what the issue is. I need to get my shit together. I know. Um, I know the episode is late. Okay. I I promise that I will try to do better. I will do my best to do better at time management. Okay. Anyway. So this week we're going to talk about my personal relationship with depression. Um, and then the next two weeks we're going to have local neighborhood baby on, um, to talk about uh, her podcast um, and her relationship with depression. And we kind of talk about um, just kind of the struggles with having it and um, all the things, really. Uh, so check that out. That will be released next Saturday and then the Saturday after. Um and then we'll also have a guest on later after that to talk about sobriety and yeah, so that's sort of what's coming up. Um, but let's just go ahead and like dive right in. I think this is probably going to be like a mini pixie just because um, it is the week of Christmas and I am having like, <laughs> you know, sort of like mini panic attacks because it's the week of Christmas and I still don't have all the presents. That's fun. Um, well, I mean, but that kind of like leads into depression. So for this week's topic and really the next three weeks. Uh, so depression. Let's fucking talk about it. Uh, I figured out that I had depression probably, well, because like I started therapy when I was 14. About. Okay. About. 14. Um, and I don't, there was definitely like a discussion on depression, like that it was a thing and, um, I, you know, I probably have it like that kind of thing, but I don't ever remember like officially being diagnosed, um, until I was 18. Uh, now that doesn't really mean much. I could, you know, it, it's possible that it did actually, I did officially get diagnosed before that. But I, when I very first, like, remember somebody being like, no, yeah, you definitely, like, you've done the tests and yeah, you, yeah, you have it. Um, yeah, so 18. Uh, and I guess I always kind of knew, which is sort of like my, I guess, um, like, I guess it's that thing for me that, uh, like, I always kind of knew that I had depression, but I don't know, something about, like, you know, a doctor or like a like somebody in like an authority an authoritative position um someone who we in society have said you know like this is your job this is what you do this is like what you're an expert in is like mental health um someone you know finally being like yeah no you yeah you have a depression it's a thing you have yeah um So because, like, I was 18, again, I I don't know if that's true, if that was the first time I was, that was just the first time I remember, like, someone in, a, in an authoritative position in the mental health, um, who has their education in mental health, uh, saying, you have depression, it was when I was 18. And I, like I said, I always kind of knew that there was something off. Plus, like, we were pretty open in my family about talking about mental health issues, um, like, you know, addiction, anxiety, depression, 
Um, I guess those are kind of the big ones. But, you know, we did have conversations in my family about those different things. Um, and it is like one thing when your parents are like, yeah, you're, you're depressed. Like you have depression and it's a whole, but it, like that's totally different than somebody, you know, like I said, who has an authoritative uh, position in mental health that the feeling is different. It's, it's, it's on, it's that feeling of like, yeah, but you're, just, you're like my dad or you're like my mom. Like that's, what do you like? What do you know? You know, and but so I so it was sort of that thing where like I always kind of knew it was just different when I was told when I was 18 that feeling was different. Um, I remember there being relief, I do remember that. I remember there being some kind of relief there, um, of like, oh, yeah, okay okay, this is the thing that I really do have, like this thing that I've been suffering with. By the way, since I was really little, um, like really, really little, um, I I do have memories um, of like just darker, like just having like this very dark sense, um, like as young as four. Um, like I remember asking my dad about death at a very young age. Um, and you know, like those things, I, I guess like it's normal for like little kids to be curious about, you know, like death, like, well, you know, like my dog died or what, like that's not what happened with me, but you know, j just that curiosity of like, well, what happens when you die? Like, what is this thing that happens? Like, what does that even mean when you die? Like, what does that look like? What does that mean? Um, what does that feel like? That kind of thing. I guess those are all sort of like normal questions or like, like natural questions that, a like a child would, would ask, but I don't ever remember it being, it was much more of a fascination. It was a very, um, a morbid fascination and, and I don't think that sort of like obsession with death, I guess, would be considered or categorized as normal. Um, but then again, what the fuck does that even mean? Like normal, what the fuck does that even mean? But I guess by normal, I mean like the vast majority of children are not going to be asking their parents, you know, sort of this deeper like obsessive fascination questions. Um, you know, questions that go beyond, you know, like what, what happens when you don't like questions like that, like asking, um, your parents to die. Cause I, I do believe that that was something that happened. It could be a, f a memory that I'm like filling in. Um, but I have a, a vague memory of that, of like asking my dad like to die. I'm um, at a very young age. And like, so I don't think that's, that would necessarily be categorized as like a normal thing. Um, and I don't know if that's a true symptom. I don't know if you'd categorize that as a true symptom of depression. Um, or if you would just categorize that as like kids being kids or whatever the, or like hormones or whatever the fuck, you know, I don't know. Um, but I do remember my parents being concerned, like, you know, being very upset and, like, worried. Uh, rightfully so, rightfully so. Um, but it was just, so I, like, I, I always, like that. Like, that's what I mean by, like, I always kind of knew. Like, I always did just kind of know that, like, this, like, there was, I mean, it was always portrayed for me as, like, this is something wrong with you. Um, like, there's a piece missing or, like, you're like, there's like, I didn't have that. I don't have that part of my brain. I didn't, you know, get that part when I crash landed on earth kind of a thing. Um, and I don't ever remember that feeling particularly great. I don't ever really remember ever being like, 
oh, yay, this is something that like makes me different or makes me like interesting or, um, you know, whatever like that. Like it, 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 I always remember ma- like it feeling just like, <sighs> Jesus, like I, like I, I need to hide this. I don't know. Like I, I need to hide this. I don't need, like other people don't really need to know this about me. This isn't. You know, this isn't normal. This isn't okay. This isn't good. Um, and just those, like, you know, those darker thoughts, those darker, like, feelings and emotions. I remember feeling those from a very young age. And and feeling, you know, and it, it, it went way beyond, like, just, you know, like, bullying from, like, you know, like, you can't play with it. Like, just bullshit, you know, that kids do like that. Um. It was like I, like if something like that, like little, you know, bullshit that just happens, like a little like that. Um, if like it, it was like the world was like over. Like I was incredibly melodramatic. I was very, you know, overly emotional for things. Like it would be appropriate to be crying this amount, imu- like this amount, if someone had actually died. But like no one's dead. Like you stepped on an ant, or you know, some just and just being and very very young um just not really being able to like have like contain that like those emotional feelings of just like overwhelming uh sadness and just like sort of always looking at like the dreariest picture almost i guess it's not it's not accurate at all it was isolating it was very isolating and part of the things about depression is that like you do feel well at least for me um you know i feel very much like you know a there's this thing that i have that's wrong with me and it makes me really 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 sad all the time and i don't know why um and I don't understand it. Uh, I just don't. And and so it was always that very much like, you know, there's something wrong with me. Um, I'm taking things too personally. I'm being very melodramatic. Um, you know, just things like that. And it... And, and and it seemed, and because my reaction seemed like very over the top, um, I think that was another sort of like, I guess, uh, sign, I, I guess, or symptom, maybe not symptom, but like a sign uh, of, no, you have depression. Like that's just, you know, that's what it is. Um so I don't know. I just I so I do remember though when I very first got diagnosed, like officially in my mind when I was eighteen. I remember there being relief there. I remember there being like, okay. Well, like well, because it was that thinking of like, well, now I know. Like now I know a hundred percent for sure that like this is a thing in my life. Um and it was that thinking of like, well, because now I know what's wrong with me or one of the things, you know, that's wrong with me. Um, now I can do something about it. Now I can fix it. Uh, I can go do research on it. I can learn more about it. I can begin to understand it. Um, and, you know, and there are things and tools out there that I can use to... Uh, Maybe not make it go away completely, but um, at least live with it and be, you know, a functioning member <laughs> of, you know, the world. Um, and to a certain extent, I would say that I have been able to do that. Um, the problem with me, though, is is that, like, I really, it's I, it's really hard for me to dig myself out of that hole. Like when the because I am bipolar as well, um, and 
We can talk about bipolar in, in more depth and detail later in another episode, but one of the things about being bipolar is that when you are up, you are up. You are very high. Like everything um, just seems like it's it's manic. It's incredibly manic behavior, um, manic depressive. Uh, and I do have, you know, bipolar mania. Um, and, it, and so, but when you are in a, a state like that, when you are um, manic, or when you are up, when you're very up, um, you have a lot of ideas. Uh, you have a lot of like things that you want to do. You, all of a sudden you have all this energy and you want to like do stuff. Um, and you want to be able, yeah, and you want to like move and shake and do all this stuff and you, and so what, what tends to happen for me specifically when I get into those states is I will, the, uh, some people will like shop, meaning they will like just spend a bunch of money on stuff that like they can't necessarily like afford or don't need like at all. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that I've heard that people will do when they are in a manic or very high like upstate because everything feels really amazing. Um, it's very... Like, it seems like everything is just great. And you're looking at the rosiest picture of everything. And you're like, oh my gosh, and this could do this and this and this and then this. And some, and a lot of times, um, what you will say doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's, it can become, it can come out as like word salad, which is basically just like a bunch of words strung together in a sentence that don't really mean anything. Um, and so that can happen. Uh, I don't think that's happened to me very much. Um, I'm not going to say it's never happened because uh, I obviously don't remember every single time. Uh, but it's it, it, it probably has happened to me. I just couldn't tell you like a specific time when it has. Um, but so that's like you're up. So that's like a high. Um, but when, that, but that means when you're low, you're really, really low and it does take, and I don't know if this is a symptom of being like manic depressive, um, coupled with also being bipolar, um, or if it's just a symptom of depression in general, I'm not really sure. Um, I just know that like for me specifically, uh, I've been diagnosed with both and depression and bipolar. Um, and what happens for me is when I'm low, it's, I mean, just the lowest of the lowest of the low. And so like, so you'll be up, you'll have like, I'll have all these ideas and like, you know, you'll want to do stuff and you're like, I'm going to work out every day and I'm going to do all, you know, do all this stuff. And, and you do it for a little while. Um, but then when you're down, so think about that. You've just made a bunch of like plans and like are going to do, and you have all these ideas for all this stuff, but then the depression hits. And so you've set all these things in motion to do this stuff. And then it's like, well, you just never finish it because you're, you're depressed and you don't want to do anything. And your entire body is just void of like any kind of energy. There's no energy to do anything. Like it takes the amount of energy that it takes to get out of bed to go to the bathroom to pee in the morning. And then like that's the, the like you have just exerted all of your energy for that day. Um, and so then what do you do? Then you just go back to bed. Um, I've I've had states where I don't necessarily just like go from the bathroom to the bedroom and just lay in bed all day. Um, I'll move occasionally to the couch. <laughs> it's change of scenery, I guess. Um, I usually don't really want to eat food. I'm not hungry. I don't eat a lot. Because um, it just like all I see is I just like, I'm just like, that just takes way too, that would just take way too much energy for me to eat if 
like if I did that, then I'm not moving for like four days because that's just too much energy. I don't have the energy to, you know, even take out like leftovers and heat them up in the microwave. Um, and I mean, the mentality of it, like when you're in your head, because you are, you're just in your head. You don't really, I don't personally talk very much. Um, I cry a lot and I have a lot of like, um, overwhelming emotions. Uh, and it just, and so I'll cry. Um, and I'm shaky. I'm real shaky. Like I have tremors and I just like, and like, I feel like my whole body just feels like it has like restless legs. So you can't get comfortable. I mean, it's just like, it's its own version of a living hell. It truly is. It's truly its own version of a living hell. Um, and it can't, it, 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 well, it can be, um, it really can be. And you lose interest in everything. You're just like, fuck everything. Like, why would I do this? You don't really want to read, which is very, you know, that's not really, that's not normal behavior for me because I love to read. And so, but like, you just pick up a book and you're just like, no, um, you don't really want to listen to music. I've gone through periods like that where I'm just like, everything is annoying. Like everything is just super annoying and I can't take it. Like I don't, I don't want to read a book, even if I read a book in my own head. Like it's just like, well, I'm just so annoyed with myself. Like I can't even stand the sound of my own thoughts. Um, and music is not a good option. Um, listening to a book, it's just, it's like, well, you know, all of a sudden the narrator of the book is just like, you know, the worst person ever for no reason. And none of that is actually true. Like the narrator is probably perfectly fine. It's me in that position. It's 100% me just being like nitpicky about every little possible, just finding bullshit reasons to like not want to, you know, even press the play button on my Audible app, you know, or whatever. Like it's just... Because everything is just cringe and everything feels like nails on a chalkboard and and you just don't want it and you don't want to do anything. You just don't. You, like nothing. Nothing sounds appealing. Um, and you just lose interest in it, like everything. You're just like, no, fuck all of it. Um, why? What's the point? Um I have toyed with the idea of suicide um, in the past. Um, we can do a whole separate one on that. Um, because I think that's something else that needs to be talked about more. Like, uh, yeah, you're not alone. If you have had thoughts of suicide, welcome. Come join us. We have, you know, we have cookies. Because, like, you are not the only person on the face of planet Earth that has been like, fuck this, shit sucks, like, I'm out. Um, and just so you know, for the most part, like, you're right, like, shit is not great. <laughs> um, but, you know, just know you're not alone. Also, like, don't do it. That's not, no, um, don't, don't do it. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, like, reach out to friends or to, like, family or, you know, like, your teachers or whatever. Like, I get it. Um those are good options. Those are good things. And like, you should do those things. Uh, no. Okay. I take that back. Well, I can't take it back, but, um, I should all over you. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> there I go again. No. Uh, I do get that though. I, cause I do remember like, especially when I was a teenager, um, and having like suicidal thoughts, it was very much, you know, like, well, I fucking already tried, man. I fucking already tried talking to everybody that used to have on this stupid fucking list. And guess what? Nobody fucking listens. Nobody gives a shit. And when you are one of, you know, 25, 30 kids in a class um, and a teacher has, you know, nine classes a day, good luck. <laughs> good luck. You're not like it's not going to happen. Don't like it, but don't. I think that's so insane that like we tell kids, you know, like just talk to somebody. It's like, well, fucking who? Who the fuck do I talk to? Um, 
And I get that. And you're right. Because it's all stupid. It is. And it and it doesn't make any sense. And guess what? Um I'm gonna get you I'm gonna get you in on a little bit of secret here. Okay, this is the secret to life. Um, I figured it out. Let everyone know. No one has a fucking clue what they're doing. Nobody's got a clue. Adults don't have a clue what they're doing. Yet yeah, nobody. So it, it's stupid. It's all stu- No one's got a fucking clue. We are all making this shit up as we go. We really are. Every single one of us. I, re- I got to adulthood and I was like, you people don't know what you're doing either, do you? And they're like, not really, but just like go with it. Like, that's adulthood. That's what life is. Okay, nobody's got a clue. We all just are making everything up as we go. And, like, that's it. That's the secret to life, okay? I've figured it out. That's what it is. It's it's just no one has a clue, and we're all making shit up as we go. Because no one knows what the fuck they're doing. Um, So that's all life is. It's just a series of choices that you make up as you, you know go through life and you just go with it and you're just like okay um i guess this is what we're doing because this is the path that i've the choices that i've made and have led me this way so i guess that's what we're doing now like that's life like that's all life is um just so you know everybody kids out there no one knows no one's got a fucking clue and you're right to feel like nobody else has a clue or why are these adults so they're not why are these adults so much smarter than you? They're not. They're not. They're not. Okay. They're not. They're making it up just like everybody else is. They don't know what they're doing. They don't got, then nobody does. Nobody does. And that's not exactly, you know, like the most uplifting thought when you're a kid. It's like, great. So I figured it all out. Like nobody knows what they're doing. So now, like now what do you do? Now you just make it up. Now now that's what you do. That's the answer. Now you just make it up as you go to. Because if everybody else is making it up as they go, then why the fuck can't you? Like just, I don't, again, not the most comforting thought. It's really not. And, but I do also remember like when that first, like when that idea like first hit me, I was just like, it was not comforting. I didn't feel good about that when I when I was in, you know, the depths of despair, you know, just lying on my couch or in my bed, just going like, fuck, man. Re- the truth is no one really has a fucking clue. Like, that sucks. That sucks. That's a fucking nightmare, especially when you're a kid. Like, teenagers, young adults, whatever the fuck, you know, people want to call you. Pick a name. I don't care. Call yourself whatever. Tween, preteen, I don't even know anymore. But but that's not exactly the most comforting thought when you are, you know, a kid or a young adult or, you know, I don't know. I guess we're talking demographics, not, you know, the between the ages of 18 and 30 or whatever the fuck. Like when you come to realize that, that that's a thing, that that's the thing that is the world is essentially based on it's very depressing it's very depressing to think about that it's very sad um it can be very overwhelming it can be very um it can be numbing it can be incredibly just like like shocking where you're just like fuck um yeah it really can be uh, and I remember feeling like that. I remember feeling that and just being like, oh, I can't do it. Fuck this. Like, I just, I, and then I just like roll over in bed and I'm just like, ugh, everything's awful. Uh, I will say though that as I got older, and I start, so one of the things that I personally do, um, I guess it's like a tool that I use. Um, I guess it's in my toolkit, I suppose. But when I'm in a very low state, a very, very depressed, um, obviously anxious as well. Well, I don't know if that's obvious. It's possible it's not. But I do have anxiety too. Um, 
but when I'm in that state, when that very low, anxious, just very overwhelmingly sad state, one of the like tools that I have in my toolkit is that I will just sit with the sadness. I just have to sit with it. I just, and because it's a wave, you know, it comes in waves and it's a wave. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I, I learned that, I guess, when I was in treatment. Um, the idea of just like sitting with your emotions and just sitting with your feelings. Um, because that's okay. And when I was in treatment, it was like the first time that it was really like okay uh, to just like hang out, you know, in my sadness um, and just be like, yeah. No, I'm just like really sad and I don't really know why, but I also know that it's because of everything, but don't really ask me specifically what, because it's just like the culmination of all of it put together. Um, and if you want to get specific, but see, that's what it, it made me do is, was it made me get specific? Like, what are these things that I just find like so overwhelmingly sad? And I had to start small and to start very, very small with things like, well, you know, I didn't turn the dishwasher on, on this morning or whatever. And I thought, or I didn't turn the dishwasher on last night before I went to bed. And so now this morning I woke up and when I went to go unload the dishwasher and it's just like, and that, and, and it's like, okay, well, why would that give you overwhelmingly? Like, why would you just be overwhelmingly sad about that? And I had to really like think and like ask these questions. Um, and I had to start small, like I said, like with stuff like that, like with the dishwasher or, you know, like the vacuum, you know, vacuuming or whatever. Um, very small things just like that and just figure out, you know, and just ask myself questions like, okay, well, why would that make me really sad? Well, because it makes me disappointed in myself. Why does it make you disappointed in yourself? Well, because it, uh, you know, I know that I have really good parents and my parents, uh, you know, did their best to raise me. Um, and I feel like they would be disappointed with that. And then it kind of, and then you kind of have to really like, and that's where it's, that's where it, for me personally, therapy is really helpful because then, you know, that's when the therapist comes in and goes, or like chat pipe, the therapist is in the room, but the, um, but when like the therapist chimes in and goes, oh, okay, that's interesting. Why do you think that your parents would be this disappointed with you for not starting the dishwasher the night before? Like, why? That's a very small thing. Like, it's not, you can just push the button now. It just, you know, takes a little bit longer for, you know, somebody, like, you just won't have those dishes to be clean for the next hour or whatever. But, like, it's re in the grand scheme of things, it's, like, really not that big of a deal. Um, so why would you think, Abigail, that that specific act would make them disappointed? And then it just, so then that that's, like, what therapy is. And it just, like, you go in and you explore, you know, like, all this stuff. And you're like, well, I don't really fucking know. But that's just how it feels. And you know what? This is a good thing that I think everybody needs to know too. That's okay. That's fucking okay. It's absolutely okay for you to be like, if, if somebody's like, why are you sad? Or like, what, why is that overwhelming? Or anybody, I don't care if it's your therapist or anybody. If anybody asks you a question and you're like, I don't know, I just am, that's all right. That's totally fine. And I got lucky enough to have a very good therapist Um to have two really good therapists over the years. Um, one I love so much. I've worked with her for years and she's amazing. Um, but she, you know, and she would let me do that. She would let me, you know, go into and just be like, all right, cool. You don't know. That's fine. Nobody said you had to know the answer like right now. Nobody said that. No, whoever told you that is a liar. They didn't, they lied to you. You don't have to know right now. And it's okay if you don't. That just means that we, you know, that you in therapy or me by myself, you know, we just need to, 
you just sit with it for a little bit longer and like really go into it and like look at stuff um, and kind of pull it out and go, well, you know, there's something here. All right, we'll put a pin in it because you don't know right now, which is fine. And we'll move on and we'll keep going. Let's just keep going down this, you know, down this path and like figure some shit out. Let's let's talk about some of this stuff. Um. And so that's one of the, I'm a really big advocate for therapy. And so that's one of the things that I really like about therapy that it's it's really helped me a lot. Um and that's one of those tools that like I I would use um along with just like being able to sit. But I I remember not really fe- feeling like I could do that. Um or not, I guess not really, it's not that I didn't feel like I could do it when I was younger. It was more, um, I didn't know that was okay. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know that that was like a thing that you could do. And it was like, okay for you to do. I didn't know that. Um, I just didn't. And it is, it is absolutely, like, you can't do it. Do it. It's okay for you to do it. Uh, somebody one time told me, you know, like, it's okay to not be okay. You just can't stay there. And I agree with that uh, to a certain extent. You know, like, it's like, I totally agree that like, it is absolutely okay to not be okay. It's 100% okay to not be okay. And I do, but I do like that end part there too, where it's like, you just can't stay there. Like, you just have to know that at some point, you can't, just not be okay for like ever like that's not I mean I guess you could do that but it's just not it's not gonna help anything like you just have to you can sit with it for as long as you need and there's no I guess there's really no like definite time when see I guess that's like that's why I said to a certain extent because it's like I don't know what the time is and I also don't think like it's it's okay for me to be like, well, you, it's been six months. Like, you should just kind of, like, move on. Like, that's not okay. I don't think anybody should say that to somebody else. Like, that's just not cool. Like, no, there's no allotted grieving period. Like, or, um, you know, like, time for you to get over shit. Like, that's not, no. Everybody gets over shit, like, in their own way. Um, and in their own time. And that means if it's been, you know, 10 years, then it's been 10 years. It, fuck it. Who the fuck cares? It didn't happen to you. Whatever the thing was, like, it just, you know, I don't know. I feel like I'm just digressing. Um, But I don't know. I just. All right. So I was very, uh, I guess I was happy and a little bit grateful. Um when I found out and there was relief there um I mean I don't remember being depressed that I had depression uh I just remember feeling very like okay okay like now we can do something about this um I have been on medication um I'm not currently on any medication right now um it's just been like really busy and I just haven't like done anything about it Um, but if that's your thing, if, if medication is like, if if it helps you, um, by all means, take it. I've taken really, really good medications before. Um, I was on Wellbutrin for a while. Uh, Wellbutrin was like gold in a bottle for me. Uh, the only reason I stopped using it was because it stopped like working. Um, and it's also used mildly to like help you stop smoking cigarettes. And I smoke cigarettes and I, it makes them like taste bad and I'm not not like I I, I still kind of wanted to like be smoking cigarettes um but you know regardless that that's neither here nor there it's just one of those things like I it's just why I haven't taken it Seroquel has also been something that um a medication that I have uh or bupropion I guess is the like generic name I don't know if I'm gonna get like sued or flagged or something because I said the uh, the actual drug names in there um but it uh 
it helped a lot. Um, it did make me gain weight though, and I didn't like that. Um, it also made me very, very, very sleepy. Um, and I have insomnia, so that was it, it was kind of a double edged sword because I would be able to sleep, um, but then waking up was like it was like being zombified. Like that's how my husband described it. You know, it was very like you know it would take me hours. And by the time I was like fully awake, um, like not groggy, like at all, and like able to do stuff, uh, there'd be like two or three hours left of like sunlight. And then it'd be like, well, off to bed again, you know? So it's like, you know, um, I wasn't really able to, you know, do stuff, do a lot of stuff. Um, but it did help a lot. Um, I do remember that, uh, it did help a lot. Um, I've been on lots of stuff uh, before. Uh, the magic cocktail hasn't really been quite figured out yet. Um, that's kind of the son of a bitch about medication, though, is that you essentially turn yourself into a guinea pig for your own like psychological experiment because everybody is so different. Like You can't just... Uh, there is a magic cocktail and it is, and, and it's not a one size fits all. So like, it's not a one size, y you can't just give every single person the same drugs and be like, yep, yeah, it'll work. No. Um, every single person has a different chemistry and a different, there's sort of, there is a base there, you know, it's where it's like, okay, well, like we know that you don't have, you know, very high dopamine levels or, you know, stuff like that. But for the most part, it's, you never know how somebody's going to react to a medication. Um, and so it does take a lot of time. Um, that's sort of one of the reasons why I got disheartened by medication was because I felt like I had been on medication for a very, like on and off for a very long time. Um, and I never really found anybody that like I clicked with specifically as like a, a psychiatrist. Um, which are the people that like write you prescriptions. Um, so that was an issue. Um, but then the other thing too, is that it felt like it was, it was like I was getting depressed about the fact that like I couldn't get on, we couldn't find the right medication. And it seemed, of course it did. It seemed like I have gone, it seems like I have gone through you know, every medication known to man, you know, every single thing that they've come up with, I've been on. Now, that is 100% not true. There's no way that's possible because there's so many different kinds of medications out there. It just feels like that. You know, like once you've been doing it for so many years and you're like, yeah, great. But now, like, we still haven't. Like, I feel like I've tried everything that would humanly be possible to take. And it still doesn't seem like we found. Because not only do you have to figure out, like, once you find the medications. So for the first hurdle that you have to get over is figuring out, out of all of the different kinds of medications out there, which medication um, is going to specifically work for you. Like I said, it's not a one size fits all situation. So you do have to like go through, you can, there are scenarios in which I've done it. <laughs> it's happened to me where I've gone through just a laundry list of med of different medications. Um, and some of them work, some of them don't, some of them you have side effects to, some of them, like it's just, you're just like, I don't, it, and then the well, and then the issue becomes so like then once you find, let's just say that you your doctor wants to put you on like two medications, because it's just it's it's a fucking logic problem. God, I'm sorry. Um, so let's just say that you have now like you've gone through the entire process. Let's say you got really lucky, you got like super lucky, and you just have a doctor that you like click with really well. Um. And, you know, they really like you and you really like them. And it's, you know, you've talked about stuff. They've looked at all your, you know, your medical charts and all the stuff, everything you've looked at. And your doctor picks two medications just like randomly off the list of it feels like about a billion different medications. Obviously, there are I don't think there are that many. It just feels like the list is, you know, miles and miles long of medications. 
So let's just say you get lucky, right? And he just happens to pick two medications, you know, within like, I don't know, let's say like three months um, or like six months. Okay, so like six months because it takes so once you start taking medication, it takes about a week for it to like really start to work. So like once you take the medication, it's not a happy pill. It doesn't work like that. Like you it, it has to build up in your system over time um, like anything. And so it's not like you take this medication and then like all of a sudden you're just like happy as fuck. No. That's not what happens. It that that tends to happen more with like benzos. Um so like uh diazepine, like so Valium, Xanax, that but that's because it just fucking makes you sleepy. It just makes you sleepy and it just makes you want to just like go to bed. Um, and those are mostly prescribed for like anxiety and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, so let's, so he get, he, you just get this, you know, this, these two prescriptions, right? And they work and they have, you don't have any side effects to them. Um, there's no side effects. You're not feeling weird. Um, it's cool with your friends and family. They're like, no, you seem perfectly normal. You just seem like a little bit health, like happier, um, like a little bit more upbeat. You know, you don't seem quite as nervous all the time. You know, like just, you know, it's all good. Like you just, you, you get it. You got really lucky. Well, a <laughs> couple of things happen after that. So you got really lucky. Now you're on these two medications. Well... At some point, your tolerance is going to kick in because over time, it accumulates in your system, and uh, which means they'll have to up the dose uh, or lower the dose depending upon you know various and unsundry things. Uh, now, what I ran into was, you know, they would up the dose, up the dose, up the dose, up the dose. And then there is a ceiling for like how many milligrams they can prescribe you stuff. So like with like Seroquel, for example, like they, there's a ceiling. I believe it's like 2000 milligrams or something like it might be like eight, actually like 8000. It's something it's like an insane amount. It's like a crazy high amount. Uh, the milligrams like it's a cutoff like doctors cannot legally prescribe you any more than that because like it's not good for you. Like, it's bad. Um, so a couple of things happened with me. So that would happen. And all of a sudden, we'd get to this point. And then it was like, well, now we have to detox your system for like six months to a year. Um, and then we start all over. And so I got sick of that. I got sick of doing that. And I was like, great. So we're just essentially, I'm just delaying the inevitable awesome cool I got really sick of that I got really sick of just being like oh god here we go um the other thing too is is that if you're on more than one medication so like if you're on two medications um just because usually how that will happen is you won't get really lucky and what will happen is you will try so like you'll be in the midst of like trying medication um and then all of a sudden you'll find one that works. Okay. So you're finding one that works. Yes. So you found one that works, but now you need another one for something else, something totally different. Um, I still like a mental health issue, you know, sort of like that. God help you if you're on like other medication, like, you know, blood pressure medication or like heart medication or something like that. I don't even know how that like that's just a whole other variable that hasn't even been talked about because that can whatever medication you're taking for that, like for your heart or like stuff like that, like then it can interfere. It can have you can have like weird adverse reactions to like other medication. Like so it's yeah, that's just a whole other thing. Um. But you have to tell your doctors, guys. You have to tell your doctors, like, all this stuff. Um, otherwise, they can't help you. They really cannot. Like, they need to know all of the different things. Um, so if you are on, like, heart medication or, you know, like, other or whatever medications you have been on, like, just be honest with your doctors. Please just be honest with your doctors. Like, they cannot help you if you don't give them the full story because it's like they can't work with um, – you know, they can't diagnose you if they only know half the story. Um, so please just tell them. Okay, I digress. Anyway. 
so what will happen is like, so you have this, uh, you have this one medication and you find that it works. Well, now you have to figure out what dose, what the milligram dosage is that you're going to be taking for that one med- medication while also trying to figure out what medication number two is going to be because that has, you haven't found one that works with that yet. And then, and so, and that, I mean, it can take forever. It can take years. It really can. Um, and that's a lot of time and that's a lot of money and that's a lot of energy to exert and to ask people to exert um, with people who are already in a situation that they are low energy to begin with, with like, say, depression. Weird. Um, and it can. I want to be very honest about that. It can. It can get very costly, very overwhelming. It can feel like you're not getting anywhere. You've been doing this thing for like years. Um and you haven't really had a like felt a change or anything like that, um, and so it can it can get very and then that doesn't even include like the insurance bullshit like what do we do all the you know is it is my insurance going to cover it is it not all this I mean it's just a fucking it's a nightmare it's a fucking nightmare, um, I agree with you it's a fucking nightmare and we need to change it. I just. <sighs> And so that can be very disheartening and very just like, what, what the fuck is even the point? Why would I do this? Why would I go through all this with, and by the way, with no for real guarantee that I'm going to come out the other side any better um, for any, you know, significant amount of time. Um, and that's kind of where I, I am right now. Uh, with it where which is why I just quit like I just stopped trying to take medication um because I just got very disheartened with it and I was just like oh god I can't like I was essentially I essentially felt like I was just being told you know like yeah this is something that you're gonna live with for the rest of your life so you know suck it up figure it out and um here are these drugs to uh like that we don't know for sure if this is going to help you, but we're just going to try it. You can go down the list. And I don't really have a better way. I honestly don't really have a better way. I haven't come up with a better way of how I think that should be done. Um, That's for somebody smarter than me to figure out. I don't know. Um, I just know that, like, I got very disheartened with it. And I got very, like... Just overwhelmed and very, like, burnt out of, like, the search, the quest, um, for not being depressed. Uh, I'm doing a lot of, like, natural stuff right now, um, just to hi- kind of, like, help keep stuff you know like running smoothly you know so then I can actually do stuff and function um so I take like natural stuff I just take like a lot of vitamins and shit um but so that can be one aspect that's like very disheartening but if but like I said that's just one of the reasons that's just like the reason that like I have personally chosen to like take a step back from medication um and kind of like not go down that route right now um because I just got very like overwhelmed and tired with it and I was just like I can't do it anymore like I just got really burnt out um but if you're on medication and you found medication good for fucking you um and congratulations uh you have successfully completed this level of the quest um I have not uh, but congratulations to you for completing it because you're doing better than I am. All right. Um, so props. Uh, and if you're still not sure about medication, that's fine too. Whatever. Um, I just really, I, I know that it has helped me in the past. Um, the couple of times that I've found a few things that uh, have seemed to work pretty, pretty, pretty well. Um, and therapy, always therapy. Therapy is amazing. I love therapy. Um, again, something that that can also get really expensive very quickly. Um, that's a whole other thing. We need to do one about like healthcare costs, mental healthcare costs, 
specifically, but healthcare costs in general. Um, so, I mean, you know, those are just a couple of things. Um, I have found, though, that like some of my greatest ideas have come out of my depression. Um, like some of my best ideas for projects that I want to work on or like things that I want to do um, have come out of my depression. Um, and so, I mean, there is that good aspect to it. Like I do, there is a part of me that enjoys that sort of like, um, that, that search for uh, like the therapy aspect of it, like that search for uh, like what's really going on here. I feel like it gives me just like a deeper understanding of who I am um, as a person, but also it, I feel like it does give me some sort of insight into other people and allows me to have that sort of like, you know, at least be able to like empathize on a certain, on some level um, with people, with other people. Um, or even like animals to a certain extent. Um, but I, I've always enjoyed that part. Um, I've, I have also really always enjoyed like the research aspect of it. So not necessarily like the, you know, the self exploration of it all. Um, I do enjoy that part too. Um, but also like the, like the physical research, like I've done a lot of research, like reading on the brain, um, and like neuropsychiatry and neuropsychology, um, neuroscience just in general um the ds you know just like all of those different kinds of things um and i so and, and i found that that's something that i really enjoy um and it also happens to be something that my husband and i really enjoy talking about and discussing um so it's one of those things that like we have in common that we like to talk about because we're weirdos we're fucking weirdos um but that's okay uh so that's something that i i do think that um, is good about my depression is that like it has helped me um, learn how to effectively communicate too. That's another thing. Like it's how it, it's helped me like, um, you know, like I said, you have to do that. Like I did that. Like I like, I enjoy doing that like self deep self exploration of stuff, but it also has forced me to be able to be um, more articulate on and more honest, at least with myself, um, about like what, what is going on? Like, why am I feeling like this right now? What can I do? Um, I'm a really big fan of like, um, meditation. And I don't mean like sitting in a room and humming. That's fine if you do that. I can't do that. My mind just, I get very overwhelmed and anxious about it. Um, about like doing, you know, just like sitting in one spot and like just focusing on my breathing or like oming. I get very, very anxious in my breathing. So, and I feel like it, I, I basically throw myself into a panic attack while I do that. Um, so I can't do that kind of meditation, but I can do like other, I do enjoy doing like other kinds of things. Um, so like one of the things that I'll do is like, I'll put, and I learned this one and uh, it's part of DBT, which is dialectical behavioral therapy by Marshall Linehan. Um, and then there's CBT. Uh, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, they're different. Um, they're both different, but um, I actually prefer CBT over DBT, but I started with DBT, and I really do like DBT therapy. Um, it helped me a lot, and it has done some really great things for me. And But like, okay, so but like one of the things for DBT that you do um is like a meditation thing. But like I said, it's not necessarily you just like sitting in a room and, you know, humming to yourself. Like that's not what they mean. They mean that you can do that. That is a form of meditation that you can do. Um, but like another form is like I'll put lotion in my hand and I'll feel the lotion. So it forces me to focus on like, okay, is the lotion cold? Is it warm? How does it feel? Is it sticky? Is it smooth? Is it watery? Is it chunky? Is it... Um, what does it smell like? Uh, what does it look like? Like, what color is it? Um, you know, and it's just like engaging all five senses, um, and like telling yourself like what they are. 
Um, and that's a form of meditation. I do. I like doing stuff like that. Not necessarily with the lotion. I will do it with the lotion, but I've also done it with, um, you know, like doing the dishes, you know, temperature of the water. Does it feel good? Is it hot? Is it cold? What does the soap smell like? Um, what color are the dish? You know, just like stuff like that. It just helps. It also helps me a lot when I'm like, when I feel like I'm going to have a panic attack because um, it helps me focus my mind. Um, but I think those are all things that are good that have helped me with my depression and things that I've discovered about my depression that I don't really necessarily dislike. Um, and so I've also learned that not only, I guess for me, to wrap it up, I guess, is I have found, um, I've come to learn that like my depression isn't all bad. There are actually a lot of really good qualities in, um, in my depression. So it's kind of like, you know, that yin and yang that, you know, that light in the darkness. Um, I've been able to find that light in the darkness in the, in my depression. Um, and I'm learning to like embrace my depression and be like, no, this is like, I've accepted it to the point where it's like, yeah, this is a part of me. And my husband has accepted, you know, like, yeah, this is a part of me, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and that's like one form of acceptance. But I've also come not only to just like accept that I have depression um, and just like accept that, yeah, this is probably something that I really and truly am going to have to struggle with for the rest of my life. But it doesn't have to define me. Um, and even if it does, like, it's still a part of me and there are good things that come out of my depression. It's not all, I mean, it's not a fucking joy by any stretch of the imagination when you're going through it. Uh, cause when you're in the fire, it's fucking hot as shit. Um, it's not fun. It hurts. It's painful. There's a lot of tears, a lot of, you know, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of fear, a lot of um crying and screaming you know just all the stuff it's not fun it's not great when you're like in it but um well no not but not but it's just i have found that there are things that i like about myself um that are due to depression like things that i've discovered about myself that I otherwise, I don't think I would have had time to like really look at or have not, maybe not necessarily the time, but also like the, um, the, the hard work of like going like, yeah, okay. But like, why do you feel like, like, what's up with that? Like, what's, what's that feeling? Why do we feel like that? You know, going into that deep dive mode, I've found that, um, I found that to be kind of peaceful as well. So there are good things, um, about your depression. Um, or things that you can turn into positive and things that, you know, like I have found that I like, I like, I like my depression because uh, one of the things I like about my depression is that I do think that it makes me more empathetic and sympathetic um, with other people. Um, I really do. I think that it does, you know, kind of help me to understand or want to understand other people and um what's going on with them and I like that about myself I do I think that that's something that I like about myself um that I otherwise I don't think I would have discovered about myself if I hadn't had depression and if I hadn't had the time um to do that or the okay to do that to be like yeah no it's it's cool like we know that's like what the thing is like it's cool just yeah no let's explore this let's really go into this so i don't know let me know what you guys think um next week like i said we are going to have stressed depressed and anxious local neighborhood baby on um for the next two weeks she's we're going to do part one and part two she's going to talk about her, her, uh, her relationship with depression um so look forward for that. Uh, it's going to be really great. Uh, she was so much fun. I enjoyed her so much. And we're definitely going to have her back. Do not worry, everybody. She is going to come back on. Um, 
and we're going to talk more about all the things, all the stuff. Um, so that's fun. Um, you know, our Twitter is at MP Weirdo Podcast. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, I'm thinking about doing a Patreon at some point. I don't know. Maybe we'll figure it out. Um, email us your just your stories of depression, your thoughts, your feelings, all the stuff, whatever you want. Um, manic pixie weirdo at protonmail.com. Email us, shoot us an email, talk to me. Um, about what's going on with you and depression or anything, anything at all about depression. Um, as always, stay kind and. <clears throat> Be weird and stay kind, guys.